Good evening, people. If this interests you and you wish, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Philosophy Pop-Up Workshop. As you can see, it's another beautiful evening here at the Novadir Beach on the south shore of Nantucket Island, Massachusetts, USA. Again, I'm I've chosen to talk about COVID. It is so important, I think I must put that at the forefront. Beyond politics, even though as I explained in my last video, politics can make a huge difference in how populations are affected by COVID. Tonight is going to be very practical, it's going to be scientific, uh, and it's going to be maybe a little dry and technical, but I'll do my best to explain as easily as possible. There's a basic thing that I'd like to explain to people. As you know, scientists have spent months on this, and they have made mistakes. Uh, in some cases, there are still great mysteries with this dynamic disease. But there are still our best hope. And one of the things that has come up specifically is they've done a lot of studies having to do with droplets and aerosols. Droplets are what comes out of a human being if you cough or you sneeze and it goes to somebody else or it lands on something and they touch something and then they touch their nose or their mouth or their eyes. And then you get an infection. That happens a lot with influenza. I've had it happen myself where I got it indirectly from touching something that someone had sneezed on. With aerosols, you're talking about much, much smaller particles, but in the studies what they see is these smaller microscopic particles have just as much of the corona and they come from people simply speaking not breathing hard normal breath they've done tests in closed rooms if the air is closed these aerosols and I'm sure you know aerosol spray how that actually works if you don't Go and do a bit of research and you'll see the scientists experimenting with aerosol sprays and experimenting with the virus. And it will go a good distance in a closed area and it will linger, unlike influenza, where the droplets will fall to the ground very quickly. With COVID-19, otherwise known as SARS-2, the droplets will last, I'm sorry, the aerosol will last in the air so that somebody can walk into a room someone else, someone else has left minutes before and they can get it. Having said all this, what is essential and the message that I want to give people is please do your best to stay out of what I call dead air spaces, meaning being inside buildings with windows shut that is where the disease thrives and spreads everywhere. And my suggestion would be to open all the windows. I've also thought about this and I know there are sociological things. It's very easy for me to say that if you live in a place where there's no crime or very little crime. If, if you are in a different situation, I would suggest if you can, buying fans trying to find some circulation because the key to beating the virus is to have circulating air. The best thing you can do is to be outside. Absolutely the best thing is to be outside as much of your life as you can spend outside, please do it. And beyond that, if you, if you have to have artificial ventilation, um, I, I can't really speak to air conditioning because that's very technical. And as we know from a lot of experience, sometimes that kind of circulation works very well with diseases and pushes them away. And in other times, for example, uh, if you take Legionnaire's disease, which infected a lot of people in Philadelphia, 
many decades ago. That was all from one convention where they had an air system that was actually circulating the air, but not in, a, in an efficient way, but the air circulation actually created the spread of the disease. So you have to have the technical people do the proper thing, and it will help tremendously. If one can afford it, if one can figure out how to do it, it will help tremendously with this disease.